For my series Interwoven, I have been exploring homosexuality and the hypermasculine culture within the kingdom of Eswatini. Due to the fact that homosexuality is illegal in this country, gay men constantly have to hide their sexuality and suppress their true identity. The project has been evolving over the past eight years. In 2009, I received a fellowship through the Brandeis University after finishing my undergrad at City College. It was to document the HIV epidemic in Eswatini, which has the highest prevalence of HIV in the world. During my first few years there, I also spent time during the week documenting handicraft workers, primarily candle makers and basket weavers. While documenting these artisans, I learned techniques of hand weaving, which I then started applying to my photographs. The head wrap comes from having seen women throughout the Swaziland wearing them on the streets. It was one woman that I met in a local market that taught me different ways of tying, knotting, and twisting the fabric to create a unique wrap. Over the weekends, I was documenting the Zionist church, the country's major religion that is deeply rooted in African tradition of going into trance, speaking in tongue, exorcisms, and black magic, and its impact on the HIV epidemic. While interacting with the congregation, I was forced to hide my sexuality for fear of negative or hostile reaction. This anxiety made me search out gay men who were in far more risk than I was. In the beginning, it was photographing my friends who I'd met while living there. That then turned into friends of friends, and then I started working with a few NGOs that were helping me find men in the more rural areas. I was photographing and would hear their, their stories, and I felt compelled to give them a voice. It was the understanding that their identities need to be concealed for basic survival, combined with my work with the handicraft artisans, where everything started to literally weave together. The societal oppression on the LGBT community of Eswatini does not give individuals choice in proper health care, a proper job, and proper education. It is very important for me to make sure my subjects feel like, in the process, they have a choice. During the photo shoot, I bring several pieces of fabric for each subject to choose from that is then made into the unique head wrap. The reasoning behind this is that I see the fabric as an extension of them, their creativity, their personality, and how they want to present themselves to the world. This gives them their own unique outlet to express their individuality that they regularly have to hide. The head wrap is feminine, and it would be taboo for men to wear these head wraps in public, as it would indicate a homosexual tendency. Now that I'm finished with the portraits, I am taking the technique of weaving and hand shredding the printed photographs, weaving them with the fabric from the head wrap. Each man's gaze is directly on the viewer as if demanding attention to their cause while still being hidden behind the fabric of culture and society. In each piece, the identity is skewed as if they are put into a submissive state typical of their everyday lives. Through this series, I aim to channel a voice for these suppressed men while embracing an otherwise frowned upon identity with a sense of pride without neglecting the reality of their everyday existence. It is about and for these men, and I want these individuals to have as much of a voice as possible, one that is denied to them on a daily basis. The project has been collaborative, as it is not my place to dictate what is presented. They own their identities, and I'm merely the conduit that is hoping to introduce those identities to viewers of my work. The implications of this project aren't confined to Eswatini. This is a global issue. I have deep affection for the country, its culture, and its people, and I do not intend to single them out for criticism.